Hey folks, it's Brian. It's time for another Jeep video. We're gonna work on this salvage Jeep and get it rebuilt. Uh, today's project is the water pump. So, engine's out of the vehicle. It's a lot easier to work on it here. And uh, I'm gonna take the water pump off. I'm gonna change the thermostat and uh, that's that. So it's these four bolts. Uh, that's the long bolt and there's another bolt here. So there are actually five bolts and then these two bolts here. And uh, they don't take a whole lot of torque when they go back in. So let me uh, put the camera somewhere. There we go. And it helps to work with the factory service manual. You can download this online and then you can print it out. Uh, and that makes it much easier. So let me get this uh, set up. I'm actually going to move the camera because I want to plug it in. All right, so I've got the bolts for this, they're already off. I'm gonna go ahead and stick that there. And then we're gonna use this just to save me some hassle. these I'm going to put over here. So that's been on there a minute. That's an original Mopar thermostat, or that's a Mopar thermostat, probably original. We'll uh, have to work this old gasket off and clean that up. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Sure doesn't seem like a long bolt, but apparently that is a long bolt. Plastic impeller. That suggests that this has been changed before. Unfortunately, I don't know when it was changed, and so I decided to uh, preemptively change it while I'm here. So I need to take this out and remove this, um, and then I've got some junk to get off here. So. The rest of this looks pretty good. I don't see anything uh, overly concerning in here. Yeah, looks uh, basically like I would expect it to for the age of engine it is. Um, Does not, uh, looks like it's a 2005 pump based on this. Um, I don't see anything wrong with it though, but again, I'm gonna go take this off. I'll be back. All right, so it's a little, little bit junky out here. Yeah, it just is what it is. So we're going to do bad things to this. We're gonna crank this in here. 
probably not a good idea if I was planning on reusing the pump, but I'm not. the new pump, which is a Gates pump in here, and I'm going to add some thread sealant. that's about right. We'll see you in a minute. Alright, so I'm just going to fit this up in here. It needs to come around a little more. Um, so we'll see if we can do this by hand. A little less. That's pretty close to perfect. So I'm going to set this down and now I'm going to work on cleaning this up. Uh, let me find a scraper. Alright, I think 
that's pretty clean, but let's wipe it down with acetone and find out. stuff there. Let's see what we're working with here. So I've got a little bit in here and a little tiny bit there. Let's see if we can get rid of it.
Okay, so let's wipe it with acetone again and see how clean it is. So I just got it dirty again, wiping my greasy hands on it. That's all right. So this thermostat, I'm going to go to recycling, and then we got to clean this up. So I'm gonna go put this in the vise to do that. All right, so I've got these surfaces as clean as I can get them. There's still a little tiny bit of junk here. Let's see if I can scrape this off. Yeah, it looks like I got a little bit more of it off. It's, uh, really hard to get these gasket surfaces clean. I've got this one as clean as it's going to get and there's still, I mean, I can see some residue here. So my solution to this is to use a skim coat of RTV. I went and read the manual for um, gates and, and they say a skim coat is fine. So I'm going to put a skim coat on here um, that'll help with the sealing. It'll help hold the, the gaskets in place. So that's what we're going to do. Let me get my uh, gloves on and we'll get going on that. All right, so I'm gonna wipe it down one more time to make sure that all the debris, all the oil from my fingers, all the stray coolant, everything is off this mating surface that could interfere with getting a good seal. Oil and grease are your enemy when you're trying to get a good gasket seal. So I'm going to do the same thing to the thermostat housing. And then even though it's brand new, I'm going to wipe down the brand new water pump. Because again, I don't want any oil or grease interfering with the fit. of this water pump. All right, so it does come with a gasket. It is a cellulose and rubber bonded gasket, so it does not require sealer, but according to Gates, a small amount of sealer is okay. It also includes bolts, and these bolts go in um, the uh, pulley. They're a different size. I'm very carefully extract the gasket, verify where it's going to fit, right there, hang it there, fastest way not to need the services of a rag are to have one ready to go. So, now, that's probably all this is going to take. Now, nah, maybe a little more. But skim coat means, you know, like, I just put that little teeny tiny drop 
halfway around the, the pump housing. So I'm going to use another little bead, very, very small. That's a skim coat. And now I'm getting the excess sealant out of the hole. All right. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the pump. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put a very small skim coat in place on the gasket surfaces. Shouldn't need it on the pump, but again, it is not going to hurt anything to have a very, very small skim coat on these surfaces. Another itty bitty tiny bead for the other half. Just another little hair needs to be on here. And then I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I've got any excess sealing out with my thumbnail. Okay. Now we're going to take this. Oh, we've got a little bit more that we almost missed. So this is actually... part of the water pump. And it's an area that's hard to clean. So, I make sure we don't have any holidays here. All right, that looks good. Okay, so before we go too much further, these are really low torque bolts. And hmm, wonder where it went. There it is. So I'm going to add thread lock to all of them. All of these are what I would refer to as difficult to get to. Uh, I lost some sealant on my shorts, apparently. Okay. 
because these are lower low t I mean you never want to start bolts um, with the tool anyway it's okay to use a socket like this spinning freely which is what we want to see that's the long one uh, the weep holes on top on this pump which is weird but okay This is your long bolt. And the last bolt. So these get, uh, let me double check my specs. Two hundred inch pounds. That's what it says. Two hundred inch pounds, and we're working with a half inch socket. So let me find that. All right. That's going to be the top end of what this little tiny wrench can do. So there's 200 inch pounds set on this. Let me find an extension for it. Okay, so there we 
There we go. So let's uh, put some more gloves on, and we're gonna do that. So now this one has. Uh, I bought a Felpro gasket. This one has RTV in the right places. Let's see. We're responsible for absolutely nothing, and we'll give you 50 cents back if the shit doesn't work. Typical corporate warranty. You know, it's funny. Felpro used to be called Federal Mogul. They've been in this business for a long time. Um, so they make a good product. I am also using a Gates thermostat. I'm going to stick with the OEM. Um an impossible box to open. It sure doesn't look like the OEM thermostat, but I, I trust Gates. Spring goes in, and I don't see a bleed. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see a bleed at all. I guess you don't need a bleed because there's a bypass. So it sits down in there, but first, let's get our... I, I'm still going to put some RTV on it, because I, I just think that it is good insurance. Um, even though that gasket has it, I, you know, I got the RTV, um, and I don't think this surface is as clean as I would like it to be, and a skim coat will address that, and it will certainly not hurt the quality gasket. So again... skim coat, so we're going to see if we can spread this as thin as possible. And I know there's probably some armchair experts out there telling me I don't know what the fuck I'm doing and I shouldn't be doing this because Jeep didn't do that, but I'll remember, I'll remind you that Jeep's interest is in cutting costs and they don't really give a shit what the consequences of cutting costs are. My interest is in not doing this again. Alright, so there's my skim coat on the thermostat housing. You change gloves. I go through a lot of gloves. These are fresh, so they actually go on smoothly. The other ones were kind of old. RTV, so I'm going to put the cap back on. And we'll put some thread lock on this. I just don't trust these. These are really low torque value bolts. Okay. feel better if this had a bleed valve, but it doesn't, and it'll eventually come out. Very tempted to drill one. Hang on a second, I'm going to go check something. Alright, I've decided that that bleed hole is not necessary, so I'm going to go ahead uh, verifying 195, so I got the right part number. Motorrad is the manufacturer, that's interesting. Part of the reason I don't think the bleed is important is the, it's got one built in. What the hell is it going to do? So, it's going to get the long one here first. 
Okay. And then it's going to get the sort one. Oh, yeah, I should put the gasket in, too. Man, I feel stupid sometimes. Probably would have stayed just fine without the gasket. Now, that was not needed. will require me to go decontaminate the thermostat because it dropped in the oil pan. Damn it. I'll be right back. Okay. Now that that unpleasant drama is over and the thermostat dropped into the catch pan underneath the engine and was coated with oil. So I went and decontaminated it. to install the thermostat gasket okay that looks correct and again I'm going to stand because it's easier for me it a couple turns out because what I want to do is have some wiggle room for this see what that thermostat housing torque value is. All right, 15 foot-pounds. Why they couldn't design this to be universal so that both of them had the same settings, but it is what it is. So 
we got 15 foot pounds set here. Um, looking around because I thought I had a socket out for this already. Hmm. Not seeing it. got to deal with these and I don't know what the value is at so I gotta look up and see what those need to be torqued to in the meanwhile let's go ahead and set this on here yeah they are a different thread pitch So, we will get that ready. Let me see if I can find that value. Okay, so the best I could come up with after searching the internet was 17 and a half uh, foot pounds. Um, the same as the fan blade. Um, it doesn't say anywhere explicitly in the uh, factory service manual that I have. These sure seem awfully long for where they're at. Now there is a thread protector and I'm going to leave that in place um, for the moment. Alright, so. Fifteen, seventeen and a half. Here we are. I'm just getting them tight.
So I gotta find a way to hold this. screwdriver. I got an idea. No, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to put the belt on. Let me think on this. So I decided that, you know, I've got lock washers, so I just need to get this snug. So that'll do it. Um, that's not the way I like to do that, but that'll work. So I'm sure it's at 17 and a half foot pounds at this point. Um, you know, the reality of it is it's in the water pump. Um, it, it's This is part of the shaft, um, so it, it'll be fine. All right, so that's it. This project is done. The water pump's replaced. The thermostat is replaced. Uh, next thing I need to do is the valve cover gasket and then the transmission input seal. Uh, so those will be different videos. Uh, thanks for watching. Please let me know what you think in the comments, and I hope this helps somebody with their project. Thank you.